ever since I started gaming on controller, the thing that always bothered me the most was probably the amount of friction it has when you move around the thumbstick. So I had the goal about five years ago of modding an analog stick in a way that would have absolutely no friction to it. What that ended up doing is not only did it remove the friction, but it pretty much removed the dead zone. So it always rests pretty much back in the same place all the time. So you could see on the normal analog, drifts around a certain amount, stays in its angles, where my analog always falls back right into the same area. You could actually see the numbers out there. So that is the actual deviations. Now here's one thing that's interesting. If I'm tilting the controller around, it actually picks up a little bit of signal. So let me show you guys this happening in game. You can see just the weight of the analog is actually able to shift my aim around. To understand how this works, this is what a standard analog gimbal is. This is what's inside most of the controllers in the market. So the way the analog gains tension is it uses this plunger over here and it has a spring inside. And when it's moving around, that plunger is scraping against the base. So the reason you always feel friction in a controller, that's the part right there that you feel friction on, is that plunger just compressing and sliding around that base. So the idea I came up with was just to remove the plunger and use all the tension from the spring. So all it's doing is it's pretty much just resting on a gimbal and compressing springs. So there is actually no friction that's happening with the actual mechanism. There's no plastic parts that are really rubbing against each other. All it's doing is just squishing springs around. So you're probably wondering how well this actually works in games. Well, overall, I saw a massive improvement, mostly in my tracking and my ability to flick and land on the target exactly where I want it to go. One thing that I noticed is since it doesn't have that same center dead zone snap that you usually notice on a regular thumbstick where it snaps back to the center, this kind of is free floating and sort of has a more linear tension to it. So it just kind of moves and just sort of squishes around as you're moving it. What that does is that kind of removes a little bit of stability from the dead zone area. As soon as you rest your thumb on it, all of a sudden your aim is drifting around. It's almost untamable how small this dead zone is. So what I believe I need to do is I need to create the tension much higher than it is right now. Right now the tension sort of matches a normal analog stick but I believe I need to double or even triple the tension on it, which also this is gonna create a lot more accuracy. Having a higher tension with no friction should be able to have you pinpoint the exact angle of deflection you want much easier and remove a lot of the shakes that are happening in your hand. Now I know I'm gonna be getting the question if I actually plan on selling these one day, and the truth is I'm not really sure. I mean, I hope so, but it was a really complex mechanism to be able to make. I know a lot of people are familiar that I sell the thumbsticks on Etsy, but these are really simple parts. This is something that is completely practical to be able to just put the file in the 3D printer, print it out, and be able to just glue the parts together and you have a finished part. But with this, this is a really complex, very, very precise mechanism I had to make. And it's also super delicate because it's all made with resin 3D printed parts. So this is something that would require more of an injection molding type of process, which the problem with injection molding is it requires a very special mold, a very expensive mold, and thousands and thousands of parts to be able to make it. And it might not be something that is really practical for me to invest into. So, you know, maybe someday down the line, maybe I'll maybe find an easier way to make it, or maybe it will be worth to just invest into it. But as of right now, I'm just going to be treating this as a personal hobby and I'll keep updating you guys on the progress.